What does your body feel like in zero gravity? What inspires you to become an astronaut? What exercise do you do? And do you sweat in space? What do yo-yo work in microgravity? So it works. Dag Hammarskjöld School, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is PS254, Dag Hammarskjöld School. How do you hear? We have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Thank you. We are so excited for this once-in-a-lifetime learning opportunity for our students to learn from astronauts what it's like to live and work in space. We've assembled our own mission control here at PS254 to prepare for this special day. Thank you to AP Moser, teachers Mr. Katz, Ms. Atsaves, Ms. Monteperto, Ms. Gray, and Ms. Simsek. And thank you to Superintendent Beauvais, the Brooklyn uh, South Field Support, DIT, and of course, NASA for making this event happen. And special thank you for the representative from uh, Marty Golden's office. This is such a great opportunity for our students to learn about space with their feet firmly on the floor. Hi, my name is James Deepak, and this is my question for Ricky. What kind of experiments are you doing in space, and what do you hope to learn from them? Thank you for the question, and thanks for joining us today. We've had some amazing uh, day passes over New York the past couple days. It's just a beautiful beautiful part of the world to see. So, uh, so glad to have you here. Um, we have over 200 and some experiments occurring on any given day. Um, uh, really twofold. Uh, we're trying to understand the, the planet we live on and, and how to improve life on Earth. And uh, we're also trying to figure out how to keep humans healthy and develop the technology that's going to carry us out into the solar system. Um, one of the uh, really interesting things that is, is going on right now is uh, Drew was actually here several years ago and helped install the alpha magnetic spectrometer, uh, which will help us understand the very fabric of our universe and, and how it was formed. Drew and I actually have been helping start a new experiment called the Cold Atom Lab, which will create one of the coldest places in the universe right here on the space station, almost at absolute zero, which will help corroborate some of the, some of the information we're learning from the alpha magnetic spectrometer. So what is the universe made of? I can't think of a more exciting, uh, exciting experiment to, uh, to uh, help get started. Comes. Thank you, James. Nice, Hello, my name is Guga, and this is my question for Drew. What is your greatest discovery aboard the ISS? 
Well, specifically, if we're talking about experiments, it's difficult to say because, as Ricky mentioned, we have experiments going on all the time. And our job as astronauts is really to be the hands, eyes, and ears for research scientists that design the experiments. So on a personal level, level the greatest uh, discovery for me has, has always been how quickly the human body can adapt to a zero-gravity environment. And I know it seems unusual for me to spin the microphone in front of me here because on Earth we can't do that, but in space, these things are really very normal for us, and passing each other the microphone or floating through the cabin seems very normal, and that adaptation happens very quickly once we arrive in space. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Max Gerolov, and this question is for Ricky. What was your most dangerous mission in space? Yes, space is a very harsh and unforgiving environment. The temperatures can vary several hundred degrees. Um, the farther you get away from the Earth's magnetic field, you have to deal with the effects of, of radiation. Uh, launching on a rocket, is uh, it, we make it look easy, but it's really not. We've learned some hard lessons that way. And uh, doing spacewalks, uh, going out into the vacuum in a small self-contained spacesuit is also very dangerous. So really, uh, we, we haven't gotten to the point where space travel is, we make it look easy, but it's very, very complicated. We're only able to do it because the amazing people on the ground all around the world that uh, help keep us safe. Uh, but all the way from launch to just living here on a day-to-day -day basis, doing spacewalks and landing, it's all a very dangerous and a risky business. Hi, my name. Hi. Hi, my Hi, my name is Timothy. And, and this is a question for Ricky. If you could have a wish for a mission to be assigned to, what would be your what would be your ideal mission? Any any mission to space is a, is a good thing to be a part of, uh, but it'd be hard to top uh, my experience here over the past three months. I was just talking to Serena earlier. Um, when you get to do exciting stuff with really great people, um, it, that's just a really good thing to be a part of. So what we've been doing here has been really special, and um, uh, I'm really happy to play a small part in it. Hello, my name is Olivia, and my question for Drew is, how do you resolve conflicts with other astronauts on station? Well, usually we try arm wrestling first, uh, but that, that typically doesn't work because in zero gravity it's hard to do. Um, we don't really, we try not to generate conflicts to begin with, and uh, we spend a lot of time before we fly in space uh, learning about our own behaviors and learning about the behaviors of others so that we know what to expect when we get to space. And we do that by training together on Earth uh, with what we call expeditionary or analog missions where we work in unique environments, whether it's backpacking in the mountains or sea kayaking or living underwater in an uh, underwater habitat. Um, these are environments that allow us to learn about each other and uh, learn to resolve conflicts um, gracefully so that once we get to space, uh, we know what to expect and uh, we can change our expectations of one another. And the, the goal is for all of us to get along because um, with as much work as we do up here and how challenging just the work is, um, personal conflicts are really not something that uh, contributes to um, well-being and, and uh, harmonious life on the space station. So we try not to start those conflicts and when we do, we talk them through. Hi, my name is Sam, and this question is for Ricky. How do you cope with being away from your family and friends for such a long time? How often do you communicate with them? Thanks, Sam. Yeah, that's probably the hardest part about what we do is being separated from the people you care about. And um, we're very fortunate on the space station. Uh, we have a voice over Internet telephone, so we can call home. Um, uh, I talk to my family almost every day uh, over the phone. And uh, uh, the folks at uh, NASA, they, they provide uh, once a week we get a, a teleconference with our family. So uh, my, uh, my family is able to... Um, I'm able to see them, talk to them. I'm able to show them around the space station. My crewmates get to say hi to them and, you know, actually see them on a video conference. So uh, it's that that's always makes for a special, special uh, part of the weekend. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Soakstead, and this is for Drew. What is the coolest thing you have seen in space? Uh, the coolest thing I've seen in space has to be my friend here, Ricky Arnold, uh, <laughs> as he's floating around the space station. Um, and aside from him, I'd have to say that uh, looking out the window and seeing Earth from space is really magic for us. And uh, that view never gets old. It's something we do each and every day. Uh, we try and take photos frequently, whether it's daytime or nighttime. I'd have to say looking down at the planet that uh, you all live on and we live on uh, when we're not here is uh, pretty magical for us, pretty amazing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nathan. My question for Ricky is, has NASA found evidence of life on Mars? And do you think it is possible to colonize? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Martian surface is uh, is an interesting place for for geologists and uh, and I think for for uh, for biologists as well. Uh, we have found evidence that uh, indicates that Mars could have supported life many years ago, um, and uh, we know that the Martian soil has uh, has water um, available to us. So I think colonization uh, will be very challenging, but I think it's it's a realistic uh, endeavor for for human beings to undertake. Hi, my name is, is Matthew, and uh, is what was there any impact on your body when you were launching? Uh, yes, there is an impact on our body when we launch, and that is the G-forces. It's nothing that's uh, permanent, really, when we launch, but there is an instantaneous feeling that we have uh, generally two or more uh, times the force against our chest that we normally feel by just uh, sitting back in a chair. And so that launch, when we uh, leave the launch pad and, and start off towards space, is uh, uh, very rapid, and we feel that pressure as if somebody's sitting on our chest. Hi, my name is Yasmin Semeng Janova, and, do, and my question is for Ricky. Do you, what is it like in microgravity, and do you ever get sick of it? Microgravity is a lot of fun. Uh, it, uh, joding, uh, floating is pure, pure joy. Um, so, uh, and it, it also is, uh, it's very easy on your body. Uh, you don't, you're not dealing with gravity, and so kind of the aches and pains you deal with on Earth, they kind of disappear up here. There are times, however, if I was just to let this microphone go and Drew and I started talking or doing something, this microphone would seemingly have a mind of its own and would find a way to disappear and might not show up for a couple more days. So keeping track of personal belongings can be a real challenge here uh, on the space station. Thank you. You want to stand up? Uh -huh. Hi, my name is Gabriella. This question is for Drew. How long can you last in space without a spacesuit and no gadgets to help you? Unfortunately, uh, space where we are in space is a, is a vacuum. It means there's no air, there's no air pressure, there's no air for us to breathe. And the air pressure that we feel on Earth is what actually um, holds our bodies together. And in fact, our spaceship is pressurized. So it has the same pressure, air pressure against our body, um, just like the, is the pressure that you feel on Earth. And uh, if we were to be in space uh, without that pressure holding us, it would be like uh, filling up a balloon and uh, filling it up so much that it couldn't hold itself together anymore. And so for us, we can't last that long in space. Um, really just a matter of uh, several minutes, and um, it's really not a healthy place to be for us without a spacesuit to keep us all intact. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carla Diaz, and this is my question for Ricky. Does, does your digestive system work differently in space? 
Uh, interestingly, uh, we haven't really done a lot of uh, research on that. I, when the earliest astronauts came up, they ate and everything seemed to function as it did on Earth. And we're able to, you know, provide get the, the fu for, for purpose of eating is to provide nutrition for your body, and we've been able to do that. Um, per, on a personal level, uh, I find that uh, things tend to move a bit more slowly. I don't feel uh, hungry quite as often. I, I tend to feel a little bit more full with far less food than I would on uh, on Earth. And I think that's a function of gravity not helping food move through your digestive system. Um, so much so that uh, you know we tend to lose a little bit of weight, and we really have to. We, the doctors monitor our weight. We get weighed in every monthly just to make sure we're getting enough to eat and maintaining the the body mass that we need to be to be healthy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Eli Reyes, and this is a, my question for Drew. What is the hardest everyday thing you have to deal with in space? Uh, living with my crewmate, Ricky Arnold, is the hardest thing I have to deal with in space. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we enjoy our time together, and uh, as we do with all our crew members, and I would say the most difficult thing uh, for me, and Ricky mentioned it earlier, is just being away from home. And uh, I, I, I say often that uh, astronauts, when astronauts are on Earth, they wish they were in space, but when they're in space, I think uh, we all wish that we were back home with our families. Stand up, Megan. Hi, my name is Megan. This is for Ricky. Do you have a free time in space? If so, what do you do? Yeah, Megan, we have a little bit of free time, not too much. So sometimes our weekends are, are, are fairly clear. Um, but uh, keeping this ship running is, is a round-the-clock kind of endeavor. Uh, but when we do have free time, as Drew said earlier, we love looking out the window. Uh, we love uh, taking pictures of the beautiful earth beneath us. Uh, we like sharing meals together. Um, we like, uh, on Saturday nights, we like watching movies together. And just things you would like to do on earth. I, I like to spend my free time uh, reading when I, have, when I have a chance. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. What is the common la language that all the astronauts speak on the station? Great question. Uh, you know, I think, I believe you know this is an international project here so that we have representatives from all over the world. Uh, Europeans, Japanese, Russians, Americans, Canadians. Um, and so that allows the opportunity for many different languages to be spoken. However, the official language on the International Space Station is English, uh, but we do have knowledge of Russian and some skills in speaking Russian, uh, and the Russians also have their skills with uh, speaking English. But officially, uh, we all learn to speak English together. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bailey Webb. This question is for Joe. Are there any animals allowed on the ISS? If so, why are they there? Um, yes, we do. We have had animals on ISS. We don't currently have any right now, um, but we've had fish, uh, we've had worms, uh, we have fruit flies on occasion, and we also have mice. Um, so all of these uh, all of these species are brought to the space station to help us do research and understand, uh, primarily help us understand the effects on the human body. But we use analogs in uh, animals and in, in, uh, different species to help us understand the corollaries between the effects of space on those organisms and what those effects might be on humans. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Max, and my question for Ricky is, how does the ISS protect the astronauts from solar, uh, from radiation? Yeah, radiation is, is, a, is a big deal, uh, particularly as we head out into the solar system. Fortunately, here on the ISS, we are still kind of protected by the, the Earth's magnetic field uh, from the so solar radiation. Uh, we do get exposed to more radiation up here than you do on Earth, and one of the uh, some of the evidence we have of that is at night when you close your eyes to sleep, 
uh, when the uh, subatomic particles from the sun strike your retina, you see these bright flashes uh, as they pass through your, your retina or strike your retina with your eyes closed. Um, kind of similar to when you have your eyes closed, you start to rub your eyes and you can see colors as you stimulate the retina. Um, but the Earth's magnetic field helps protect us. We also have some protective material uh, around our sleeping quarters, uh, both in the U.S. and in, in, in some of the in the Russian sleeping quarters. But that is a huge, uh, hu huge hurdle we have to overcome as we head out into the solar system. Because once we leave our magnetic field behind, uh, radiation is going to be a very, very serious uh, issue for future astronauts. Hello, my name is Artem. My question for Ricky is, have you seen any space junk? Yeah, most of the debris that that is out there is really small, and, and it's traveling really fast. Uh, we did see part of a, uh, the Chinese space station, uh, one of the earlier space stations, as it was getting ready to re-enter re the Earth's atmosphere right when we got here. And when we go out, Drew and I have been on three spacewalks, and you can see evidence where debris has hit the International Space Station. Uh, but I haven't seen anything. Uh, I've seen a few falling stars or meteorites uh, at night looking out the window, which could or could not be space junk. Um, interestingly, though, uh, just yesterday, utilizing this airlock right here, uh, Drew and the ground helped deploy a satellite that is going to go out and demonstrate uh, some technologies uh, about how to remove space junk, uh, because it is a huge risk to not only the space station, but all the satellites we rely on for weather prediction, for communications, um, and for all the other things that satellites do to help make life on Earth better. Station Mission Control, this is Carrie Moser, Assistant Principal, New York City Public School 254. We thank you, and we are yes. inspired by you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we wish you all the best uh, as this year comes to a close, and uh, all the best as you start your new year after your summer break. So enjoy your time. Thanks for joining us, and uh, please do stay inspired and uh, follow what we're doing on the space station. Take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants from the Dog Hammarskjöld School. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.